Yes, it's time. It's time to, do, 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 to talk about Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh! was a manga series created by Kazuki Takahashi in 1996. Kazuki Takahashi was his pen name. His original name is Kazuo Takahashi. At the time, Yu-Gi-Oh! was serialized in Weekly Shonen Jump, and it ran from September 30th in 1996 all the way until March 8th of 2004, spanning a Goliath run of 343 chapters in total. Originally planning a horror manga, Takahashi ended up making a battle anime where the battle is fought via games. Many will be surprised to find how dark the manga is, and how little the game of Duel Monsters appears at first. Yugi is a young boy bullied in school, and upon solving the Millennium Puzzle, he finds himself able to turn into Dark Yugi, a confident young man who takes shit from no one, and he uses games to upend evildoers. At first, the games that Yugi plays are a little weird and dark. Games where you put money on your hand and try to stab it with a knife without stabbing your hand. And if you break the rules or lose, well, you might find yourself in a penalty game. Penalty games being a personal hell inflicted upon people by Dark Yugi. The punishments of these penalty games often coincide with whatever makes the bad guy, well, bad. Take this evil skeezy director, for example. His penalty is everything that he sees becomes a blurred out mosaic. We also see alcohol, tobacco, and firearms, something often cut when anime is brought to the United States. And we also see the bad guy set himself on fire in Yugi's little game via his lit cigarette and the overpouring alcohol. Kaiba steals a blue eyes white dragon from Yugi's grandfather, but his punishment is to be made into a dual monsters card in which he will suffer the illusion of death at the hands of the monsters in the game itself. Yeah, the original Yu-Gi-Oh, it's pretty grim. It isn't until Volume 2, Chapter 9 that we first see the card game Duel Monsters. Then Yugi is teaching me how to play Duel Monsters. Drooling Monsters? Duel Monsters, you Nimrod! <sighs> you know, the little card game that put the entire series on the map. But even then, the card game still has the same made-up bullshit rules that allow Yugi to win. So, some things never change. This original manga run was adapted into an anime that never made it to America. This was made by Toei Animation and ran for 27 episodes way back in 1998. This adaptation follows the original manga and is often referred to as Season Zero. This anime keeps a lot of the plot beats of the darker manga. However, it does change some things, specifically a lot of the games and the events that unfold around them. They're a little less violent than the manga. Take for example the game in which the criminal lights himself on fire. In the anime, he doesn't accidentally drop his cigarette to immolate himself. Instead, Yugi puts him under the effects of a penalty game. One in which he believes he's burning. The flames that immolate him triggered by the very gun he was going to use to shoot Yugi. Which is still a pretty terrifying thought for a children's show. But I guess it's okay because he's not really burning after all. Despite the name, it does not connect to the Yu-Gi-Oh we all know and love, the Duel Monsters Yu-Gi-Oh. But Yu-Gi-Oh itself would be born anew. In April of 2000, the Monster 224 episode run of Yu-Gi-Oh Duel Monsters began. Developed by Studio Gallop, this wildly popular anime made its way to American shores via 4Kids. 4Kids' origins are rooted in leisure concepts. A company founded in 1970 by Mike Jermackian and Stan Weston. Mike Jermackian created the original concept designs of the Thundercats, as well as their iconic logo. Stan Weston was no small name either, the creator of G.I. Joe. In leisure concepts, they had found great success in licensing other content. And in the 1990s, their company continued to grow and began dubbing Japanese animation into English under their subsidiary 4Kids Productions. On November 16th, 1995, Leisure Concepts Incorporated renamed themselves to 4Kids Entertainment, the moniker they're most famously known for. The anime cash cow began to flow, with success stemming from the Pokemon franchise, the number one contender for highest grossing media franchise of all time. And in 2001, 4Kids Entertainment acquired the merchandising and television rights to Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters. It may be a game, but playtime's over. Saturday, September 15th on Kids WB. 
Originally set to air on September 15, 2001, the 9-11 tragedy saw a great deal of media pushed back. Everything from NFL games to the first episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! was quickly and abruptly put on hold. Yu-Gi-Oh! would eventually air two weeks later on September 29th, and children's eyes everywhere would open on Saturday morning to a new world. And so would parents' wallets. The intro was changed for Western markets, which was par for the course in the 90s and early 2000s. I always recommend trying to listen to the original Japanese intro if you can. It's actually pretty good. Another common change to English-speaking markets is name changes. All of the Japanese names have been changed to fit more conventional Western names. Katsuya Jonochi is now Joey Wheeler. Hiroto Honda became Tristan Taylor. Anzu Mazaki was changed to Taya Gardner. Of course, Yugi got to keep his name. He is the namesake of the show, after all. But his grandfather, Sugoroku, was changed to Solomon. Side characters had their names changed just a little, but not too much. Mai Kujaku became Mai Valentine. Pegasus J. Crawford was changed to Maximilian Pegasus. Keith S. Howard, nicknamed Bandit, just became Bandit Keith. These of course weren't the only name changes, and other characters like Seto and Mokuba did get to keep their names. But it is another common occurrence when watching older anime that's been dubbed into English. Huh. I wonder what a lot of these franchises have in common. The first thing many will notice is that the cards themselves are changed. They've drawn over a lot of the artwork and changed the font. They've also removed the text boxes. Instead, all that's left is the monster's attribute, level, picture, and attack and defense. You'll find this was done to remove religious, occult, violent, sexual, alcohol, and tobacco-related art from the cards. And these changes reflect in the on-field battles. When Exodia is first summoned, he doesn't come out of a pentagram like he does in the original Japanese. Instead, they've added way more points to the star. And you'll find these themes removed all across the anime, not just the cards. When Mai is first revealed in Japanese, the camera pans up her body, but in the four kids' release, they just keep a static shot of her upper torso. In one scene, they draw over her skirt to make it just a little bit longer. And let's just say, well, she's way more revealing in the manga. And her harpy lady card cards have pretty revealing titties. So they draw right over those boobs with a less revealing top. Speaking of top, one of her cards, Cyber Bondage, has been changed. Cyber shield to juice up my Not only was the name changed, but the nipple spikes were also removed. No big surprise there. In the original Japanese, Mai stands guard, keeping the boys from peeking. Of course, it's a trope in anime to have the pervy young boys sneaking a peek at the naked young lady. She also tells the story of working on a casino ship, sailing around the world, giving us her backstory. A backstory filled with gambling, and this man smoking a cigar. It ends with Honda and Joichi trying to sneak a peek, only to get bonked by Mai. Joey, I don't think we should cook the candy bars. Back off, I know what I'm doing. But in the English, none of that happens. They've removed the pervy peeking Tom trope. In its place, she takes a little jab at Joey with a cooking Look joke. Look at you go, Joey. Only thing missing is a chef's hat. <laughs> and a cute apron. Jeez. He's a right already. Now keep cooking. As well as cutting out Mai's backstory. Of course, they can't allude to gambling, smoking, or being an outright perv in a children's show. And so the scene quickly comes to an end when Taya hears a suspicious sound outside. Say hello to Dark Magician Girl! Another prime example of this is the Dark Magician Girl. She has a skirt added on in the 4Kids adaption, as well as the pentagram on her chest being replaced, instead and filled with just solid rose gold color. Of course, removing sexual content from a kid's show is a no-brainer, but some content can be harder to cut than others just based on the way it's told. Some scenes combine pervy sexual situations and violence. In one sequence, Anzu has a pervy stalker. He blackmails her, threatening to tell the school about the job she's not allowed to have if she doesn't do everything he tells her to do, holding a camera and panning it up and down in the creepiest of ways. A violent struggle ensues, in which eventually Dark Yugi comes to life and intervenes. Of course, all of the implied sexual content is removed in the English version. Here in the US, he's not a pervy rapist. Instead, he's just your basic mugger, with no camera to be seen. No perverted plans here. Also, whoever wrote this note in the English adaptation, please go see about dysgraphia, you might have it. They do oddly enough keep the violence. This is one of the few times in which the violence isn't removed from the American version of Yu-Gi-Oh. Get away from her! Get lost! Uh, Yugi! Uh, uh, in the original Japanese, we see Yugi being beat by a bully. We hear the sounds of the blows and punches, but in the 4Kids adaption, not so much. 
Say your prayers, you runt. The implied violence between Joey and Tristan is changed to shoving. Oh, hey, what'd you shove me for? I guess you're down low, bud. You, you shoved me. After everything I just went through, you go and shove me? There was even an entire fight scene edited out. There aren't a lot of full out fight scenes in Yu Gi Oh! Most of the brawling is done via duel monsters. It really sets a dark tone when Namu is being curb stomped by a bunch of guys in black robes, only to have Jonoichi go into a berserk fit of rage, slugging them out one by one. He gets a little time to shine in the fight. We get a show of his delinquent fighter character that we've seen in previous episodes. Obviously, Yu-Gi-Oh! is a battle anime, but not that kind of battle anime. Over the course of the fight, the tide turns and Joey gets his ass kicked, something they wouldn't show in America. But much to the chagrin of the animators who put a lot of hard work into this scene, most of it was cut out and sent to the Shadow Realm, never to be seen by the English-speaking audiences. Now let's take a look at the 4Kids version and how much it's changed. Wait. Joey, look behind you! Take oh, this! You got him! Piece of cake! Ah! Huh? Let go of her, you creep! Look, what do you want? <laughs> You're real tough. Why don't you pick on me? Behind you! you fool. <sighs> are you alright? Joey! I've been better. Guns are also a big deal throughout the anime. We see them in a lot of scenes, but in the 4Kids adaptation, a lot of them are removed. Hilariously, Pegasus's goons point their fingers in the 4Kids adaption instead of holding guns. The ensuing gunshots are also removed, but they do imply that Kaiba jumped to his death, which is oddly dark in its own way. He jumped. Nobody could survive a fall like that. Revolver Dragon's three revolvers are really poorly painted over. It's hilarious how cartoonishly bad they are. It almost looks like it was done in MS Paint and they've quite literally nerfed the guns on Revolver Dragon. The scene also removes the loading action of the bullet into the chamber. As a kid, that might not take you out of the scene given the context of the show. But seeing the two side by side certainly does take some of the fear the presence of three barrels brings to the table. After Keith loses his duel to Joey, he comes after Pegasus, holding a gun to his head and threatening to take Pegasus's life. Murder for the sake of money. That's something that obviously won't fly in the United States. In the English, Keith points his finger at Pegasus's head, uh, very menacingly I'll say, before being dropped through a trap door. However, both of these pale in comparison to the manga in which Pegasus puts Keith under a penalty game. His hand becoming a gun, Pegasus forces Keith to point towards his head and pull the trigger. Speaking of mind blowing. If you truly want to know, open your mind! There, uh, Kaiba. Maybe now you will begin to see. Yugi's Mind Crush is an ability we see multiple times throughout the anime. But what it's capable of and what it does is changed quite a bit when it comes to the English version. Like the difference between opening Kaiba's eyes versus destroying the evil in his heart. Pegasus may have helped you escape the Shadow Realm once before. Here we see in the 4Kids version, Yugi uses his Mind Crush to send Ghost Kaiba to the Shadow Realm. However, in the Japanese, it's the imitator of death, and he's kind of just wiped from existence. Precisely. And then you can say hello to the Shadow Realm. Ah, the Shadow Realm. Yu-Gi-Oh's version of the next dimension. I'm phasing into another dimension. Maybe you won't be such a disappointment in the next dimension. Adversaries which managed to succeed in transporting Yamcha into another dimension. 
Death is a touchy subject with children. I'll be the first to admit, when I was a child, I was extraordinarily afraid of the concept of death. The thought that I would never be here again, that everything would just end and I would cease to exist. I didn't fully understand the concept, it just scared me as a child, so I understand why they remove it from cartoons, especially ones meant to market towards children to sell toys. So it's no surprise that we see a lot of references to the Shadow Realm, replacing the concept of death. However, Yu-Gi-Oh! as a manga and an anime is filled with death, whether it's represented in cards, the threat of death, or actual deaths in the show. In one duel, Yu-Gi and his opponent are trapped at the legs, locked into a small stadium, with comedically oversized saws popping out, ready to cut their legs off at the shins should they lose the duel. Of course, in America we can't have that level of violence, so they're changed to dark energy discs that will send you to the Shadow Realm. What's that? <laughs> it's a dark energy disc, Yugi, and I wouldn't get too close. One touch and your mind's banished to the Shadow Realm! <gasps> the dark energy disc! No, this can't be happening! Please don't send me to the Shadow Realm! Not even a cheat like you deserves to go to the Shadow Realm! The Sauls have just been nerfed, and the threat of being sent to your death has been changed to the Shadow Realm, which feels a little more recoverable. The Shadow Realm may be a clever way to dance around death, but many of the games that revolve around death in the original Japanese anime have a lot of moving pieces. And the way they change things isn't always clever. Sometimes it's just silly. Take the duel with Loomis and Umbra. They stand on glass with bombs adhered, ready to plummet to their deaths should they lose the duel. But watch how they've changed it in the 4Kids edition. And as for the losers, they'll pay a very hefty price. A trip to the Shadow Realm. <sighs> But if you fall, you'll never reach the bottom. The very surface on which we stand is a divider between our world <laughs> and the dreaded Shadow Realm displayed in the magic shadow box on the floor beside you. Yep, when that's totally not a bomb. Zero, the surface below you will be destroyed, opening up a vortex that leads directly to the Shadow Realm. There are also some other minor things like removing alcohol from scenes, simply changing the alcohol to fruit juice. Gorgonzola cheese and the world's finest fruit juice. But the weirdest thing is sometimes they just change the story. I better finish this fast. The quicker I defeat Mai, the less chance for interference by the spirit inside my Millennium Puzzle. And I don't really know why. In the episode Duelist Intentions, Yugi has to fight against himself, the dark Yugi inside. But in the original, he's just too focused on Pegasus. I don't really know why they changed it. Listen, there are a lot of edits, and there's a lot of censorship in the 4Kids English version of Yu-Gi-Oh. This video is just scraping the surface. If I wanted to make a full video of all of the changes and censorships and edits, it would just almost be the entire series. You could watch the whole series from beginning to end and just assume 90-ish percent of what they've said, what has come out of the characters' mouths, has been changed. A lot of the plot beats are still the same, but the way they go about them are just so radically different. As soon as 4Kids got a hold of the script, they sent most of it to the Shadow Realm. But it wasn't just the anime that was changed. If you look at the cards in their English language versions, they've been censored as well. To be less sexually revealing, to show less cleavage or less leg. The card Spy See Spy is a smorgasbord of censorship. It's almost like playing the game I Spy. Can you spot all the changes? He twirls his mustache instead of smoking a cigar. The glass of wine has been removed from his hand. She's showing a little bit less thigh. Her cleavage is slightly airbrushed out. The hard eyes on the man in the middle in the background, for some reason also removed. The bottle of wine in the bottom left is now perhaps a bottle of orange juice? And if you spot something else, let me know. The card, Majigire Panda, has removed the frightened family in the background. I get it. Domestic violence isn't exactly something you want in a children's game. The destiny board combo has been changed from spelling out death to final. Yet again removing the concept of death. The pentagram behind Exodia has been replaced by a spell circle instead. The Ankh on Monster Reborn has been turned into... whatever this is. Religion? In my Yu-Gi-Oh? Get that Bible and crucifix out of here and replace it with whatever these are supposed to be. Guns can't look too much like real guns, so they've gone full Egyptian on firearms. Not gonna lie, that's kind of badass. Let's be honest, the anime is just a commercial. It's not really like the manga. Instead, it's more akin to American cartoons of the 80s. 
like G.I. Joe or Transformers. Cartoons built to sell children toys, whereas Yu-Gi-Oh! is built to sell cards. And that cardboard crack is addictive. As I've talked about in previous videos, animation in Japan is a different beast. There's plenty of anime that really only exists to tell you a story, to convey emotion, to give you the arc of a character, their rise, their fall, their successes and their failures, to get you invested in the cast and the world. Some anime blurs the line. They have a story to tell. They'll have a wonderful cast and a great world. Yet they obviously have things to sell you. A rule of cool that applies to the characters and aspects of their show that will sell well as toys, models, figurines, and other things. And of course, there's anime where its entire purpose is to sell you merchandise and toys. The Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monster series falls into that category. Sure, there's nice characters and a fun world, and you move along following these characters through their moments. But all in all, at the end of the day, Yu-Gi-Oh! sells cards. Lots of cards. And that's primarily what it's meant to do. Even if the intent of the original manga wasn't that, that is quite certainly what Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters is meant to do. It's quite a disconnect between the original manga's intent and the show that we all know. I recall really wanting cards so badly that I drew my own cards and built decks so I could play with my friends. My grandmother Shizuko was from Okayama, Japan, and thanks to her I was able to get cards quite early for my friends and I. It didn't really matter if I couldn't read the Japanese on the cards because I just wanted to have them so bad. And when cards finally released in the United States, I begged my parents to buy me Kaiba's Blue Eyes deck. Of course, I wanted multiple so I could smash them together to build one deck. I still have the tin they bought me one Christmas, and I keep the Blue Eyes deck in it. To this day, I still collect and play Yu-Gi-Oh! I've got three decks of varying power levels, so that if anyone wants to play, I can be a fair match for them. Their commercial worked. I wanted Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Hot off the heels of collecting Pokemon, I had to have the next big thing. It was a game that looked so fun and I couldn't help but want to play it. Within a decade of Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters airing in the United States, the card game became the best-selling trading card game ever, with over 25 billion cards sold. And within 20 years of the anime being released in the United States, the card game had sold an estimated 35 billion cards, bringing in around 1 trillion yen or just over nine and a half billion dollars. While it's not competing at the top with Pokemon, in terms of highest grossing media franchises, Yu-Gi-Oh! is up there. And on Wikipedia's list of franchises, it's actually right behind Dragon Ball. And it's still pumping out cash to this day. In 2021, Konami had its most profitable year ever, due in large part to the Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise. The modern digital versions of the card game, Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel and Duel Links, have just become a license to print money. So, of course, we can't have the over-the-top violence of the original manga. We can't even have Season Zero, because even that's too much. If they wanted to make money, they had to appeal to a wide audience. And parents aren't going to let their kids watch a cartoon that has brutal violence, or sexually explicit content. They're also not going to buy their little ones toys or card games if the cards feature this as well. It's kind of a no-brainer as to why it was all removed for the US market. Just as most things are in the world, it's all driven by money. It's about how to turn the best profit. And suffice to say, looking at the numbers, they figured it out. But it's kind of sad to see what it used to be and what it is now. What it could have been and what it became. Sadly, on July 6th, 2022, Takahashi was found dead. He had passed away on the afternoon of July 4th, assisting in the rescue of others who had been caught in a rip current out at sea. We lost Takahashi as he was trying to be the hero that he had always written about. And as sad as it is, it's nice to know that there are people in the world who don't just write about those doing good things. When the call comes, they'll try to do the right thing themselves. The world lost a great writer, a great creator, but his work is still here. I think it's worth picking up the manga and giving it a read. Go see what Takahashi's story was really like. Watch the characters stand up to the evil people of the world. See as they settle their scores over games rather than combat. I guarantee you it's a vastly different experience than any of the anime that's been made for the Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise. So, what do you prefer? Do you enjoy the manga more? The original story, a bit gruesome and brutal. Do you prefer Season Zero? It sort of follows the manga, but with some changes and it's animated. Or is it more about the card game? And if it is, do you prefer Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters in the original Japanese? Or perhaps you're more inclined to the 4Kids version. Maybe it's nostalgia or something else. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments down below. 
Hello, and thanks for watching. I'm sorry this video took a while to come out. These take a little bit of time to make. Obviously, I have to watch a series in multiple different versions and different languages. And then sometimes I have to read the manga, and then I have to do research, and I have to take all of that information and compact it into one place. And it's a lot of work. But it's a lot of work I enjoy. I have fun doing it. So I hope you had fun watching it. And I just wanted to say thanks for watching. So until next time, take it easy. What about the children? The children? I don't care about the children. I just care about their parents' money.